get all down. Thank you very much, Pyrotechnics. H2K uh, setting things straight after that loss versus OG in their second day last week, which in which in the early game they had a pretty hard time. They decided to go back to what they know. For sure. I mean, I called Trevor out a little bit for his comments on H2K in the beginning of the game. There's H2K back on form. It's exactly what they needed to do in this game. Fundamentals came back. They just got ahead and stayed ahead and honestly just kind of smothered Gambit for about 30 minutes. Yeah, that was one of the quickest wins of the summer split. It clocked in just over 30 minutes. It was super decisive. HDK, as you said, they got a lead. They actually made a few mistakes, being a little over-aggressive in the middle game. But not only did HDK play well, they were playing against a very awkward team composition from Gambit. And I just feel like, I, I don't really feel like Gambit were fully prepared for you know, this game because of how the picks and bands played out. It kind of felt like there was too many thoughts of mind games going on. Yeah, I actually do think we have a graphic to uh, reiterate those picks and bands for us as it was quite a throw off because they had that Lulu coming in in the first rotation for Gammon and we didn't really know what was going to happen. Ended up support. Yeah, exactly. I mean, first pick Lulu Gragas and, you know, there was a lot of debate, at least here on the analyst desk, about whether that was going to be support mid or top. And as the rest of the draft plays out, all of a sudden, the number one jungler in many people's eyes, Gragas, goes top lane for Cabochard. And I don't think it did really anything that game. There's one or two knockbacks on those barrels. Whereas on the other side, H2K have got this super, super strong mid-game team composition. They want to fight, they want to be aggressive, and they want to be in your face. Seeing Oduomno on Rumble was fantastic. I still consider him a primarily tank player, but I think his Rumble was fantastic. He got fed early and he helped close the game out. And I was just very impressed with how H2K played their comp and a little disappointed in Gambit. I don't know I don't know if this is just settling in with a new coach. I don't know why you would put a Lulu support when it's first pick, why you'd put a Gragas top. Volibear, yes, Diamond ran it last week, but it wasn't great then, it wasn't great today. So there's just more questions for me. I think that's the biggest question for me is, yes, Diamond Prox is going to do what Diamond Prox wants to do, but as, as yourself, Crepo, everybody kind of has been talking about it. Gragas is so strong right now. I, I struggle to see what Volibear does that Gragas doesn't. If you're looking for single target displacement, you can do that with his ult. More mobile uh, with Cinder Hulk gets just as tanky. There's really not a lot uh, that Volibear has as a pick that is super advantageous. And yes, Diamond Prox, as you said, played it last week. But I, I honestly think that putting Gragas in that top lane it's been so long since it's done. He had to yeah. go full AP because he wasn't running Cinder Hulk, so was never going to get particularly tanky. And it just left Gambit in such a horrible spot. Fizz gave them no wave clear either. Ag Gragas agreed. couldn't do it either. And, and I also just want to quickly add that because of the picks and bands and then how the early game played out, H2K got a lead. And when you think of a player hitting skill shots and you think of Forgiven playing Ash. I was quite excited to see how he was going to handle the champion. We actually watched in the Ash feature earlier today. And Gambit fell so far behind that almost every Ash arrow was a Hail Mary. Almost every was like, please make this work. Please help us get him back in. And it missed a bunch of times. It was not opportune. It was one team fight that led to kills. Yeah, absolutely. And it all comes down to, I think, also being under pressure to find footing in that game, just shooting those arrows. And in general, why not work on your fundamentals instead of trying to come up with a pick and ban phase that might be surprising to the enemy? You have to master it yourself and maybe get those relationships, those new relationships within the team going first for Gambit. Yeah, I really agree. I think s focus on coming to grip with the fundamentals and the basics before you try to redefine the meta with picks that we haven't necessarily seen work for other teams. And it's not just the basics. It's forgiven. We've talked about how he changes the entire team. Uh, not only is the team not adapting around forgiven as much as they need to right now, only got three games to go from. I'm going to compare it against 18 games from the spring split, so it is a bit of a fast stretch. But uh, the regular season, for, for, for Givens KDA, 12.25 on average. This game, or over three games, 1.5. Yes, that's three versus 18, but if Gambit don't fix it, those stats are going to keep drifting further and further apart. And definitely some more to work on for them, but we're going to take a break. But coming up next, we'll see SK Gaming try and pick up their first win of the season, which will be no easy task against the 2 and 0 Origin. Stay with us. The European LCS will be right back. I say Origin. Don't forget the time <laughs> thing to be positive, to give information. So just keep on, and we will win, okay? Good okay. luck, guys. They're the ones on it right now for Given. He's going to have to flash after the equalizer. He's going down. So is Gosu Pepper. Diamond Prox now healed up, but he's going down to Yard, and they've caught Cabo Shard on the line. The fat man makes a big target. As Odoamne is picked off, he pops his clone, or he gets his clone popped, I should say, as Lulex gets a massive knockup and a triple kill again. Going over to Yarnin. 
they have managed to take down Gambit Gaming and open their split at two and one.